if you get easily triggered and bothered by people talking within the realm of music about marketing or content or sales or brand this is not the channel for you go ahead and leave now there's dozens and hundreds of other podcasts out there to talk to you about growing your fan base as an artist who will pat you on the head and say they're there it's okay it's all about the art you don't need to worry about that nasty marketing and guess what you'll never get anywhere you'll just be continuing to play all these dive bars and make 50 dollars a night and complain about how the industry is rigged against you you're gonna be stuck working that nine to five or a couple of part-time jobs just to get by while you try to live your dream as an artist i'm not afraid to be the only one out here that's actually going to tell you straight up if you don't establish your brand you are screwed if you don't establish a sales funnel you are screwed if you don't actually market yourself and create content you are screwed this is music making sense podcast where if it ain't about dollars then it don't make sense Cause my revolutionary faculties got me switching up the game and changing minds Get them out the system, I'll be saving lives. What's up, y'all? Harkos here with the Music Making Sense podcast, where it's all about music marketing, branding, and how to have success, real success, as an independent artist. And a big key factor to having real success is to not use old, dead promotional tactics. Now, I'm sure a you're probably sitting there thinking, yeah, obviously you don't want to use old school tactics, but I guarantee almost every single one of y'all listening to my voice right now are still using this dead tactic because you don't know it's dead. Now, what tactic am I talking about? Let's just cut to the chase. I'm talking about pre-promotion. Yeah, I said it. Pre-promotion is dead. In October 2024, I technically I marked this dead a year, over a year ago, but I am stamping, significantly stamping this strategy as dead. Pre-promotion is dead. Now I know some of you are probably like, nope, I'm not listening to any more that this this guy has to say, this joker over here, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, have a nice day. Like the intro says, hey, you're probably just not a serious artist, you're a hobby artist. And you need to go on to another channel. It's going to pat you on the head and tell you, hey, everything's going to be okay. They're going to tell you that pre-promotion still works and it's the best thing you can do. Go on. But right here at Music Making Sense Podcast, we talk about real marketing tactics that actually gain real growth. And pre-promotion does not allow for any growth. Pre-promotion is dead. It does not work. And it doesn't work for two very simple reasons. Okay? First reason is we live in a hyper on-demand society. And the second reason is because when you pre-promote, you lose the potential to make any money and have any real substantial action that fans can take off of that pre-promotion. Now, I'm sure you're probably like, well, hey, I got a pre-save link, right? They use this pre-save link. They'll be able to save my song to their preferred social media or streaming platform. Excuse me. Their preferred streaming platform. And then that'd be good because then they'll get notified whenever my song drops. And then they'll start streaming it. And my first week numbers are going to be great. No, it doesn't work like that anymore. Okay, it does not work like that anymore. Now, for those of y'all who are still left, who haven't said, you know, screw this guy, I'm leaving and have left the video. All right, let's get to the meat and potatoes now. Okay, because we got all them jokers out of here. They're not serious artists. They're not worried about real tactics. They're trying to use old school stuff and think that they're serious, but they're not serious. All right. So. Now, we serious people, we can actually talk about some stuff, all right? So, let's go ahead and cover the first very simple reason how we live in an on-demand society, okay? So, there are almost 150,000 songs uploaded to streaming platforms every single day, okay? So, go ahead and grab a calculator and do 150,000 times 365, 
That's how many songs every year people have the opportunity to listen to. And Spotify and all these other platforms say how, you know, there's a large percentage. I think it was like 50, 60 percent of the music that's dropped every year doesn't even get a single play, which I think is crazy because, you know, I've heard Windy Day and other people say this, too. It's like it's crazy that you wouldn't even go and listen to your own song once to make sure it uploaded properly to streaming platforms. Like you're not even doing a quality check. You can't even get one stream from yourself to make sure, hey, it uploaded perfectly fine on whatever platforms. Right. And you ain't got to go to every single streaming platform and check it, but at least go to like Spotify or something, you know, go check it out. Go to Apple Music, go listen to it once. YouTube Music, go listen to it once, right? Make sure it's on the big ones because those three are the big ones, even though Spotify is garbage, right? Whenever I work with artists and what I'm telling you right here, every single episode, don't worry about Spotify. Focus on Apple Music and YouTube Music primarily. Secondarily, focus on Tidal, Amazon Music, and... Last but not least, focus on Spotify and SoundCloud, okay? Because Spotify and SoundCloud are filled with a bunch of bots, and you get paid a fraction of what you get paid on the other platforms, okay? Those other platforms I listed, YouTube Music, Apple Music, um, Amazon Music, and Tidal, you actually get paid a whole penny per stream, and all their users are all paid users, okay? So you are not getting bot streams and flagged for you know unauthorized or un what do they call it non-authentic streams no they change the term on it all the time but i think that's what they're calling it today but anyway there are almost 150,000 songs uploaded to streaming platforms every single day and there's unlimited amount of content created on social media every single day right so whenever you are doing any promotion, whether it's pre or post, when you're doing any promotion, you are teasing people to get them to take an action. Now, when you're doing pre-promotion, let me show you why this is dead real quick, okay? I'm gonna show, let's go through what happens whenever you run a pre-promotion campaign. So you take a 30 to 60 second clip of your music video for a song that's getting ready to come out. Your music video's not out yet, the song's not out yet, nothing like that, right? It doesn't come out for at least two weeks. I, and I think it's crazy that some of y'all out there are trying to run pre-promotion campaigns a month or two months or more in advance. I have literally seen artists saying, posting a clip of their a song saying how it's going to be out on X date. And I, I'm like, wait a second, X date is three months away, almost four. What are you doing? Because... For one, you're wasting an opportunity in front of them by doing something like that. But let's just say, hey, Harcos, I do solid pre-promotion campaigns, okay? My video has, you know, a link attached to it in the description where people can go and they can do a pre-save on whatever platform, right? Okay, well, unless you are paying for that to be what's called a conversion ad on your social media platform that you're talking about, that piece of content is going to be devalued because it has an external link in it. Okay? So there's one right there. So now you're not getting half as much reach as what you could reach if it didn't have that link in it. Okay? This is what I'm talking about whenever, like on last episode, I was talking about creating entertaining and engaging content and the description just speaks to the vibe of what's going on in that piece of content. And then you have your website URL in the bio on all those social platforms. That way, when people see that piece of content, they enjoy it, they go to your bio, they find your website, they go to the platform or whatever, or on your website, they go ahead and they can purchase it or they can get a download, right? All those things people can do when they like the song or bare minimum, like I said, you have your your full website in your bio and you can also, a lot of these platforms allow you to have a couple different links. You have another link that's either a custom URL or um, a specific page URL on your website that is for that project only to where people can go. They can go to that one landing page and they can stream or purchase your music for that song, project, whatever it is, right there. Okay? That 
is how you actually link up something. I know I was just going to say what not to do, but that's how you actually would get it going. Instead of having a link in the buy in the description that takes them off platform, now you're getting devalued because people are not able. It's 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 promotional. And on social media platforms, if you are going to be doing promotional to an outside link, you need to pay them. And look, I get it. A lot of y'all are like, whoa, Harcos, I'm not trying to be paying these people money. Or maybe you're one of those artists that said, Harcos, <sighs> this one I love, Harcos, paid promotion and advertising on social media doesn't work drives me nuts it's hilarious that you would say that because for every single person who's told me that when they actually let me see the breakdown of how they structured their their ad on whatever platform it is most of the time they don't even have their audience set up properly so they're not even aiming at the right people i had this one artist i'm not going to expose them all right, they may listen, they may not. That's up to them. Well, to this episode, I know they listen to me in private chat, but I had this one artist. I made a post about something I can't remember, something about you know promoting, and they said exactly what I just said. Paid promotion doesn't work. I've ran ads before; those aren't those don't work. They're a waste of money. And I said, I so I I, I replied back in the comment. I didn't want to blast them on 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 the book, right? It was on Facebook, I think. So I said, hey, I'm sending you a DM, man. Hit me up. And so I went over to his DM and I sent him a message. I said, hey, man, um, in regards to that comment about your last ad not working, um, show me some screenshots or something like that of the different metrics that you put in there. Um, and he's like, what do you mean? I was like, you know, your audience and, and um, stuff like that. Let me see your audience. And he goes, Okay, so he sends me over the audience. And no joke, this artist in the audience had <laughs> had three selectors, okay? He only selected three identifiers in his audience. Male, 18 to 65, and his specific town. No, sorry, he picked the whole state of Idaho, okay? Idaho because he's from Idaho right so that's the only thing he put in there for his audience and I said well that's where you messed up man like you didn't set it up right for one you're trying to hit every guy in Idaho between 18 to 65 in Idaho for one right so stereotypically half the people there are not going to be listening to hip-hop music and on top of the fact that you make tech nine style speed rap so that takes that half that would listen to hip hop takes half of them away as well too because not everybody likes that. And so I said, man, look, so you just aimed at every male 18 to 65 in your state only and your music is only going to resonate with a small fraction of those people, okay? Very, very small fraction. Why didn't you... And I started asking him questions. Why didn't you put the whole United States? Why'd you aim at only your state? And I can't remember his reason. He gave me something. I was like, he's like, oh, because you know, this is where I live. I'm like, okay, okay, there's the whole world out here, buddy, right? You got the whole United States. You got a ton of English speaking, speaking countries that love Americana style hip hop, okay? So why are you not marketing to them? You got all of Europe. You got, you know, Western Europe and Eastern Europe. You got a lot of places in, in South America and, and Africa that speak English as a second language and that love it. India. You got all kinds of places all over the world that speak English as at least a second language, if not a first, primarily. And he's like, oh man, yeah, you got a point. You got a point. I'm like, yeah. And you didn't even try to aim at any like audiences. You didn't put Ritz. You didn't put Tech Nine. You didn't put yellow wolf you didn't put any of these other so he's he's a he's a white hip-hop artist that that sounds like those guys right and i said man you didn't even put any of these cats in there you should have at least 10 artists that you're putting in there that are as close as possible to the style that you are portraying 
specifically in that song, but overall would be good as well too, but primarily to that song. He said, man, I didn't even think about that. I said, would no disrespect, man. I'm kind of being a dick right now, but do you see why you thought it was a waste of time and ads don't work? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, okay, how about this? Here's here's a penny worth of free advice. Add, come up with 10 people. Let me know those 10. He said, okay, here's my 10. I said, okay, put those in there. Select the whole United States and don't hit 18 to 65 males. Just hit, ma- you want to go for males, that makes sense. Go 18 to 42. So, okay. So he marketed it at that. Boom. Saw so exponential success. He's like, whoa, man, that actually worked. I said, yeah. When you set up things properly, they do work. And, of course, he took that free information and he went and ran with it. He hits me up from time to time about stuff or whatever, but he's not a paid client of mine. I just wanted to do him a solid because that really irked me seeing how much information he didn't have and how he thought that, that that promotional avenue was dead. It really, really works. And if you're going to be having a link that you want people to go to, whether it's a pre-save link or a post-promotional link, like a landing page, you need to run that as a paid ad in order for it to work. If it if you don't have a setup like that, it's not going to work because you're going to get very limited reach because it's taking people outside. That's how these platforms are set up. That's how they make their money is from ads. They don't make their money any other way than ads. And they don't get paid on the ad until somebody clicks on the ad. I know it said ad 55 times, but it's true. So when you're running your pre-promotion campaign with a link in the description right there, you're cutting your reach exponentially. On top of the fact, like I said a little bit ago, you are just teasing them because you're giving them a link. They're like, oh yeah, let me take action. And so if, especially if they're the first time running across you, you got to think of everyone who's the first time running across you when you're doing any promotion. Let me make this for the, the, the stranger. So I can bring people down what I call the fan journey, right? And here's the steps of the fan journey. Go from stranger to listener, from listener to follower, from follower to fan, from fan to super fan, okay? So you need to take these strangers and you want to turn them into listeners, right? You just gave them a 30 to 60 second snippet of your song. It's a great video. Make sure it's a video. Don't have any still images when you're doing these pre-promotion campaigns or any promotional campaign. Have a video, real video. Not a visualizer, not an image graphic, whatever it's called. I can't remember. Image graphic, whatever. Graphic uh, image, whatever. An actual video. Your face. You spitting that shit. You have that in there. When they first see it, they're a complete stranger. Oh, I like this. Here's a link. Let me click on it. Oh, it's just a pre-save link? Man, screw this guy. I want to listen to that song right now. And you may be thinking right now to yourself, artist, well, yeah, they can they can hit the pre-save and then they can also go and listen to other songs in my catalog. They don't want to listen to other songs in your catalog. We're in a hyper on-demand society. They want that song right now. They just gave you a chance. You're a complete stranger to them. They just gave you a chance. And they said, you know what? I like this little clip. Let me take this chance. Let me click this dude's link. Guy, lady, whatever. Let me check this person's link. Click it. Oh, man, it's just a pre-promotion link. Now, you're going to have a small fraction who will say, oh, yeah, I'll pre-save that. Let me go check out their other stuff. But you're going to have a lot of people who are going to say, no, man, I'm not. No. Bye. And those people who said bye, some of them could be some of your most diehard super fans. Some of them could be just fly-by-night casual listeners of music. Yeah, I'm sure you're saying that right now. Yeah, you're right. But guess what? They're not going to casually listen to your music. And the avid super fan is not going to be able to be developed. Out of that very small fraction of people who go ahead and say, Yeah, okay, I took that, gave him one shot. I took, his, took an action for that pre-save link. Now let me take a second action 
because I really like that snippet. Let me go check out some of his other music. And then maybe they'll be like, oh, I like this other music. They start saving it, add it to their playlist, start listening a lot. And then they go further down the journey. They're like, oh, okay, I'm a listener now. Let me become a follower. Let me go follow them on social media. Let me go, let me go and become a real fan of theirs by getting on their email list. Let me become a super fan by actually donating their music, buying their music, um, you know, buying some of their merchandise, going to see them at shows, joining their insider program, right? All these different things that I've talked about on previous episodes here of Music Making Sense Podcast, they can't do. If you don't have your stuff set up right, and just having a graphic image with 30 seconds of audio playing behind it, it leaves to where people cannot take that action. And like I said, you're just teasing them. And you're not even teasing them with just a tip to give them the full thing right after they say yes to it, right? You're not. You're teasing them with just a tip, and that's it when you're doing a pre-save campaign because now they have to wait however long until your song finally gets out. And if it's a day, a week, a month away, it doesn't matter. They have already seen hundreds, if not thousands, of pieces of content listens to hundreds if not thousands of songs in between that first time that they saw you and may have clicked on that pre-save link and your song finally comes out. So now, let's say they clicked on that pre-save link and that's all they did. That pre-save link is supposed to tell people when the song is out. Give them a notification, right? That's what all these platforms say. Oh, yeah, you have them do this, or we'll notify them. Okay, well, they'll technically notify them in very small ways. And the most popular way that they notify them is by putting it on the home screen of the platform when they go to the platform. So they go to Spotify, Apple Music, whatever. They click on it, and they'll see their most recommended at the top. And you won't be there. You'll be next. Sometimes after they got to scroll once, to see new releases, okay? You know this is how it works because you go on streaming platforms and listen to music too, right? If not, you should. You should learn how these platforms work so that you can use them properly. It's just how it is. So you're not getting at the top. At the top is where they have the most listened to artists, Hey, listen to this song again. You've already listened to it 45 times this week. Whenever I go to the gym, personally, when I go to the gym, I listen to a couple of different things. Sometimes it'll be hip-hop. Sometimes it'll be rock. Sometimes it'll be, you know, something political or whatever. I usually try not to dive too much into political stuff, but it depends on what it is. I usually, when I'm in the gym, I don't listen to anything funny. I listen to stuff that's either very motivational or it's let me get some stress out. So that's why I say either hip hop or rock. Well, whenever I go to my YouTube music app and I open it up, the top section has all my favorite songs that I listen to the most from all my artists. I listen to the most. And that's the way it looks for every single person out here on streaming platforms. So for you, who's either just now getting introduced to these fans, or whether they kind of know of you, or maybe even they're a hardcore fan, you might not be up there. Especially if you don't release music on a consistent basis, preferably at least once a month. No more than twice a month, but once to twice a month. If you're going over a month in between releases, you're you're screwed. Because again, almost 150,000 songs uploaded every single day to the streaming platforms. And your fans have people that they listen to more than you. Even if it's just a little bit or a lot a bit, they have people they listen to way more than you. And those people are going to get recommended before you, especially if they have a larger audience especially if they just released a new song as well. Let's say you and somebody's super favorite artist who is on like Drake, Beyonce, Jay-Z, 
Metallica level, right? Like superstardom, Avenged Sevenfold level, whatever, right? Let's you know, matter the genre. Let's say they're at tippy top of the industry in their subgenre. That artist or band releases a song the same day that you do. And this fan listens to both you and that big person. Who do you think Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music is going to recommend? You or that artist? Well, for a few different reasons, that artist. Yeah, yours may be on the page. They have to scroll a little bit. But before the fold, a.k.a. before they have to scroll, they're going to see that artist. Because that artist not only has a bigger platform, but statistically, people who listen to that artist listen a lot more than they statistically listen to you. And that artist is probably giving that platform money on a regular basis to promote their music. You're not. All those different reasons are why a pre-promotion campaign cannot work because we live in a hyper on-demand society. Okay? And like I said, if you are just putting out a snippet online on social media and then it goes to a pre-save campaign link, you are just teasing somebody. It's a surefire way to get most of them to never check your music out, ever. And like I said, I understand the idea behind it. You want to give people a taste of the music, of what's to come, and get them to do that pre-save campaign and everything, but that doesn't work. I just went through this. I just went through it. It doesn't work because they can't listen to that song. They can't use that song to create user user generated content they can't <laughs> let me dive into that real quick some of you might be like what do you mean user generated content there are a lot of content creators online yeah harco's duh a lot of them use music in their content well when they're scrolling through social media and they come across your 30 to 60 second clip of your song and they like it and they say oh man i could create this kind of content with that song now since your song is not out yet they can't create a piece of content to your song and what's that mean now you are not getting another instance of organic creative content with your song in it on that social platform and a lot of these content creators They'll post on all the platforms. They'll create that one piece of content and they'll post it to TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Facebook, Instagram Reels, maybe even X as well. So that means that your song in that one piece of content cannot get redistributed on all those platforms. And if they are a medium to high level content creator, your song is not going to be able to be listened to to by their whole audience in that piece of content. Oh, and let's not forget to mention, you don't get paid anything for that song getting listened to. Whether it's a you know an influencer who's using your song in their video, or it's you creating a piece of content on your channel with your music in it. If either one of them go viral, you get 0. 0.00000 dollars, yen, pounds, whatever the monetary value is in your country, you get none of it. None. Because the social media platforms cannot keep track of that in order to report to the streaming platforms, or sorry, the, the distributors. And then, like I said a second ago, people can't take that next step to go listen to it on streaming platforms. The whole purpose of putting a clip out or a snippet out of your song on your page is to get people to go and stream that song and your whole catalog in total. And extra, extra, the reason that you give it to an influencer is to amplify the reach of your song getting out to potential new fans who can then in turn go and stream that song. 
So whether it's just a regular influencer or whether it is somebody who has a reaction channel, giving your song to them, even if you have a direct communication, like you know them, you've, you've dealt with them before. If you give them your unreleased song to create a reaction video to or to create a piece of user-generated content to, and that song is not out already on the platforms, you're wasting their time, you're wasting their audience's time, and if you're paying them to help you out, you're wasting your money. Because that influencer is going to get traffic, and you are not. Yeah, you might get a little bit of residual where somebody will actually take that extra step and go to your catalog or go follow you on social or something, but you're not getting any streams. You're not getting any sales, nothing like that. You're not getting nothing because they heard that song. They want that song. We're in a hyper on demand society. You have to be able to give it to them. Okay. Like I said, if you don't already have the song out, people cannot take action. So this is why pre-promotion is dead. It's dead. It doesn't work. People can't go and listen. They can't go and purchase it on your website. They can't create a piece of content for it, whether it's a reaction channel or something else. And you cannot earn for every view that clip gets on the whole internet. From YouTube to streaming platforms to Facebook, anywhere. If it is not widely distributed through your distributor, you cannot earn. So you're leaving everything off the table, on the table. Sorry. So you're leaving everything on the table. You're leaving the opportunity for people to listen and make money off of that. You're leaving the opportunity for people to take any next step it's a waste. It's dead. It's completely dead. Pre-promotion is dead. And one of the biggest objections I hear, even after I say that, is, well, what about this artist? What about that big-name artist? They're a big-name artist. You know, people always want to say, you know, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Eminem, right? He just had a good campaign on his Death of Slim Shady album. But see, the thing is, is Eminem, the little bit of pre-promotion he did for his Death of Slim Shady album, he had zero snippets out during that campaign. His whole pre-promotion campaign was built around the hype built that he was going to kill his alter ego and brand that built him a couple decades ago. And that's the difference between him or any of these bigger artists and you. Is that these artists have established fan bases. You don't. These artists may even, like Eminem, have decades of worldwide notoriety and establishment within their genre of music. You don't. And if you think you do, and you're still listening all this time in to my channel, well, something's not lining up. Because you're coming to the internet to get marketing advice, yet you're already on Jay-Z, Eminem, Beyonce, Avenged Sevenfold level? Something's not adding up, yo. And I think what it is, is you're not on that level. And you know it. You just don't want to admit it because your ego's in the way. And I understand that. Ego is... <sighs> ego is a motherfucker. All right? But like I said, Eminem with his death is some shady. I've, I've heard people, especially when it came out, I was saying pre-promotion doesn't work. And when I was saying it, when that, that whole album came out, people were like, yo, look at what he just did on his first week. Yes, but you got to think about it. Eminem has been over two decades in the game. He built his brand on Slim Shady, his alter ego. 
decades ago. So whenever he comes out with an album saying death of Slim Shady, and all these blog articles and news articles and everything like that are talking about how he's going to kill off that alter, alter ego that made him who he is, guess what, y'all? He's going to get eyeballs. He's going to get eyeballs. Because that's what made him. That was his brand for decades. That's why his pre-promotion campaign worked. And that's the only reason that something like that would work. That's an exception, not the rule. Because he's not you. And I'm talking to you. Okay? I am talking to you. As an independent artist, you have to make sure that when you are doing any kind of promotion, that you have all the steps that you want that stranger, listener, follower, fan, super fan to take before you even launch your promotional campaign. And like I said in the last episode about content, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. When you create your content, it cannot be sales or openly promotional. Now you're maybe, well, hold on, what do you mean, Harcos? How am I supposed to promote my music without it being promotional? By creating entertaining and engaging content. And where the description speaks to the vibe of that specific content. That 30 to 60 second clip. I went over it a lot in last week's episode. Go check it out if you need to go get a refresher. But you have to create this content that is entertaining and engaging. If it says out now, buy now, stream now, (laughs) pre-save now, I I think I beat that horse up. We've established it's dead now, right? You agree with me? If not, comments, hit me up an email, musicmakingsensepod.com, send me a message over there, something. Let me know why you disagree, especially after you're listening all the way till now. But for those of y'all still with me and you're like, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, pre-promotion is dead. We've, we're done with that. We're moving on to post-release promotion. Saying out now, buy now, stream now, none of that works. People don't care. That is not how you get somebody's attention, especially a stranger. Again, like I said, when you are doing all your promotion, you need to be aiming it at that stranger Because if it appeals to somebody who has no clue who you are, it's definitely going to appeal to the people who love you. And the people who love you are the only ones you can do pre-promotion campaigns to. And you have to do that only on email lists or insider programs. And if you want some more help on building those, hit me up, musicmakesensepod.com, like I said. Send me a message or whatever, and we can sit down and get everything taken care of but that is all part of your post promotion strategy when you create this entertaining and engaging content the description has to speak to the vibe that's what's going to attract the attention of everyone from a stranger to a super fan and so saying out now by now all that stuff It's salesy. You sound like a used car salesman. So don't do it. Don't do it. You need to actually build a solid post-promotional schedule in order to have a good release of that song or project. If you don't have a solid one that takes you at least 30 days worth of promotion for that project, don't release it yet. You need to be working at least, bare minimum, 30 days in advance. Meaning you have 30 days worth of promotion already, not in the works, but laid out and ready to go. Scheduled out and ready to go. All the content for it is done, finished. It's been triple checked. It's all good. All the content's good, everything like that. And you have a calendar where you have, okay, on this day I'm posting this, on this day I'm doing this, on this day I've got this interview, I got this, whatever, right? You have all these different pieces in for your 30 day plan. Now, I always recommend working at least three months in advance, but you got to work bare minimum at least 30 days in advance. Now, 30 days in advance, you're still going to feel like you're chasing your tail. 
And I'm sure a lot of you have felt that whenever you release a song without a promotional campaign, and now you're like, oh, wait, wait, it's been a week. I don't, I still don't have, let me, let me work on some other thing. You get really hyperactive and now you're trying to like, oh, I got to create a music video real quick. And now that song that came out that you were trying to promote, by the time you get a music video done, it's been a month since it came out. So now that initial hype that you were trying to build doesn't go anywhere. So you got to have the video content when you release the audio content so that they can do all the things I've mentioned here. I'm not going to you know, hit rewind. I'm not going to keep reiterating. That way they can do all the things. But you also got to have it laid out. Again, at least three months is what I recommend for a solid post-promotional strategy. And you just keep working three months, three months. You have it on a calendar. Get an actual calendar for 20 bucks or whatever at Walmart or something. Go get an actual calendar. And you're writing all this stuff up there. Get a digital one if you want to, too. I, it doesn't matter. But you need to lay all this stuff out. And one other thing, too, is that say you release one song on October 1st. Well, when November 1st gets here, you're releasing a new song now. Because you set it in your schedule. Every single month on the 1st, you're dropping a new song. Okay, well, in November, you still need to throw in a couple of either new pieces of content for the October song and even the September or the August songs as well too. You need to be bringing in content from those other songs as well into every single month. And what this does is it helps keep all your content steadily being promoted at roughly the same rate so then that way when somebody goes and finds that so social media not everybody's going to see your post on the day you post it it may take a day a week a month three months i've had stuff a couple years later that somebody sees for the first time when that happens because social media is not follower based it is interest based so whatever somebody's interested in at that time is the kind of content they'll get suggested in their feed and if the piece of content you put out today is not what they're interested in today facebook and whatever won't give it to them that day they'll give it to them whenever they're interested in something like that that's how the algorithm works now but when your piece of content gets in front of them the first time somebody hears your music is the first time somebody hears your music so it doesn't matter if you release that song in june and it's now october guess what that person now saw that piece of content they liked it they went and started streaming the song maybe they created a piece of content for it whether it's a reaction or some other kind of entertainment to that song well now that song is getting revitalized a great case in point and again, not to get political, when Trump got shot that first time in Pennsylvania, that day, 50 Cent's song, Many Men, from like 2004, was trending. Now, that's because everybody knows 50 Cent. A lot of people know that song. But what is most important is, is that when people saw that content, on that day, decades later, after it was released, people were introduced to that song for the first time. And that can happen with any piece of content with your music behind it. Doesn't have you president don't have to get shot, right? That was an anomaly. But that's what can happen to your old music. And on top of the fact is once somebody sees that piece of content, ooh, I like that song. Let me go stream it. They go and stream it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I really like that song. They listen to the whole thing now. Let me go look at some of the other stuff. Oh, wait, they just dropped a new song? Let me go check out the new one. See how this works? Now your new song is getting extra promotion based on the content for one of your old songs and vice versa. Your old songs can get promotion based off the content for your new songs. This is how it all works. So you have to build an actual promotional strategy that works. And it's not pre-promotion. That's dead. It's post-promotion. You pre-plan for post-release promotion. Okay? 
That's how you do it. Now, you can go and create this all yourself. You can build out a, a schedule. You can try to be like, okay, okay, I got these five songs. So that's five months every single month. Okay, now I gotta get a video for these songs. Okay, now I gotta now I wanna do this, this, and this and this. You know, sky's the limit with creativity. Okay. You can lay all that out, you can start implementing it and be a hundred percent DIY. Go for it. But for a lot of you, you're probably sitting there thinking, man. Heart goes, I don't even know where to start. Yeah, what you've told me in this episode, I can listen to it 15 times. I still don't quite understand 100%. Okay, what do I do next? Well, that's why I developed Takeover Tuesdays. Now, what's Takeover Tuesdays? Takeover Tuesdays is open marketing strategy session every single Tuesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Where you can come in between 5 and 7 and you can talk directly with me and we can work on some of the things that you're working on. Answer any questions you have, help you with with this, that, whatever. If you just have general questions, anything like that. I can help you out with building your marketing strategy on Takeover Tuesdays. Now, this is not a private situation. Takeover Tuesdays is a group scheduling call. Where anybody can come in and you may be thinking, oh man, I don't want other people knowing my business. Look, nothing's new under the sun, for one. But for two, in these strategy sessions, they're all open. Anybody can come in who's part of the Takeover Tuesday program and they can listen as and while they're waiting to get their opportunity to talk about what they're doing and try to get some ideas but they can also bounce the ideas that they're hearing other people have off of their own and then grow. So you're not only just getting help from me, you're also inadvertently or sometimes directly getting help from these other artists that are within Takeover Tuesday. So if you are interested in joining Takeover Tuesdays so that you can help grow your marketing and actually get that pre-planning taken care of for your post-release promotional schedule, you need to join Takeover Tuesdays. Takeover Tuesdays is only $50 a month. And that is essentially free. Now you may be, Harkless, that's $50 a month. What do you mean? Dude, most marketing consultants charge between $1 and $200 for just one hour of working with you to do something like this. Sometimes they'll charge a lot more to actually help you build your whole schedule. But with this, every single month, 50 bucks, that's it. You can come in every single week and sit there for the whole two hours. If nobody else has anything to talk about, you could be talking about your stuff. We can be, me and you could be working on your stuff. But then at the same time, if if I'm working with somebody else, you can be listening to what they're doing, getting ideas, maybe collaborate with them. And the sky's the limit, really, on that, honestly. You know, there's that saying, your network is your net net worth. Yeah, let me say that one more time. There's the saying, your network is your net worth. This is a great way for you to network with people and grow your net worth. Not just with me but with all the other artists as well too in Takeover Tuesday, you can actually get some help. So if you're interested in joining Takeover Tuesday and building a solid post-promotional schedule, go to apexmusicsystem.com and join. Like I said, it's 100% wide open every single Tuesday and it's only $50 per month. And I think I even have it right now where you get your first seven days for free. So you can join Takeover Tuesdays today at apexmusicsystem.com and get the first seven days for free, which may be one or two, depending on how you how you work it, sessions of Takeover Tuesday absolutely for free. You can cancel at any time, everything like that. So if you're interested in actually really building something solid, join Takeover Tuesday. It's where all the serious artists are. So if you're a serious artist and you're not a hobby artist, you have to join Takeover Tuesday. It's $50 a month. 
Like, I'm not even going to do the math, but it's a little over a dollar a day. It's nothing. And to be honest, let's be honest with each other. You spend $50 a month on bullshit. You either got a vice or you spend you have random impulse buys. Over the course of one month, $50, that's nothing. It's nothing. So join Takeover Tuesdays. And you can start building a solid music business structure. As I say all the time, Apex Music System is all about three pillars in the music industry. Social, streaming, and sales. And Takeover Tuesdays is the first step to building your Apex Music System that works for you. Where you can start living that musician lifestyle, which is what all you want. Where you can create music, interact with your fans, and not work that bullshit 9 to 5 or a couple part-time jobs that you hate. But instead, you can just create the music, hang out with your friends and family, engage with your fans, and live comfortably. Where you're not having to worry about bills all the time. But you got to take that first step. And that first step is getting a solid plan together. And me and you working together, we can do that. So join Takeover Tuesdays, just $50 a month. You get your first seven days for free. Apexmusicsystem.com. Go now, join now, and I'll see you on Tuesday. And besides that, as always, make sure you like, share, follow, subscribe to Music Making Sense Podcast. Make sure you check out every single episode of Music Making Sense Podcast that I've recorded already, especially if you haven't watched the last week's episode on social media strategy, on content. You need to go check that out. It's a great episode. Got a lot of views on it. The channel is really, really starting to do well, and it's all because you are watching and you're sharing, so keep on doing that. And then, of course, make sure you also join Wednesday night, What the Fuck Wednesdays, live music review. Go to musicmakingsensepod.com, submit your song for for review. I go live every single Wednesday playing music. It's a great hang. Yeah, I help people out with their marketing right in there as well too a little bit. Just make sure their social media is on point. But in general, we're just listening to music. We're giving our own opinion on it and everything. So submit your music or just come hang out. What the Fuck Wednesday on YouTube, musicmakingsensepod.com for all the information about What the Fuck Wednesday. But again, if you want to join Takeover Tuesday and actually really start building a strategy to take over the industry the way you want on your terms, join Takeover Tuesday, apexmusicsystem.com. Until the next time, see you later.